High Dream is now finally supported natively in Comfy UI. Yes, that's right, you no longer need to use those custom NF4 wrapper nodes if you want to play. Yay! Last week we saw one NF4 version, but now we can do things normally. We've got things like a much better choice of text encoders, a normal case sampler, and if you've got less than 16 gig of VRAM, then some GGUFs too. Here, for example, I've got the High Dream file loaded in FP8, along with this ridiculous quad clip loader. Why not make three louder? Well, this one goes to four. There's a couple of clips, a T5 and a Llama, with all the files in places you'd expect. Being natively supported, all you need to do is head on over to the comfy examples page for High Dream, the one I've got loaded here. This has all the links for the files you need to download and a couple of workflows there. You've got the High Dream Dev and High Dream Full at the bottom. Follow the instructions they provide. So download the text encoders. That's all four of those and put those into your Comfy UI models text encoders directory. For example, when I click on that first link, the clip lhydream.safe tensors there, you can see the file and here is where you can download it. For the diffusion models there found in that directory, it does say download that particular one, but in this case I would say no, don't do that because we've got smaller versions now. So there's the FP8 versions of dev fast and full, which of course save you downloading that big whole file. Of course, if you do have over 34 gig of VRAM, then feel free to download the BF16s. Now that you've downloaded your text encoders and the model or models of your choice, don't forget the VAE. Now I have it already because it's just the standard Flux one. So if you have it, then you don't need to download it. But if you haven't, then it's there as an option. Start up your comfy UI, and then you can either load this particular workflow or the way I prefer to do it is just to drag the thing in. If you find you don't have the quad clip loader, that's because you've got an old version of Comfy UI and this feature has only just been added. That's right, unfortunately, the old versions don't have the new features in. In case you don't know how to update your Comfy UI, then assuming you followed my video guides and have performed a normal install, you simply activate your Conda environment as usual and run git pull in your Comfy directory. In this case, there have been a couple of updates and I don't need to do it in this case, but if you see the requirements file change, then you will need to do a pip install minus r requirements.txt as well, because they've split off the front end into its own package and that gets updated rather frequently now. As another way to stay up to date, you could also open manager and update Comfy UI via the button there. Of course, don't forget to restart and refresh your browser. Or if you haven't installed Comfy at all and are instead using the self-contained portable download, then use the special scripts which come with that. Before you run anything, it's a good idea to check the little notes section in the workflow for all the various different settings. As you can see, depending on which model you're using, full dev or fast, there are some things you'd want to change. Of course, these aren't the only settings that work. I've tested a whole load and different samplers and schedulers all seem to work well, but these defaults are generally pretty good, so start with those. Viewers of last week's video will likely already know that dev is the model they want to go for. It isn't as aggressively distilled as the fast model, but doesn't need as many steps as full. With full being the full base model, that one needs a higher guidance as well as 50 steps. Full may take a little longer, but one benefit is you can use a negative prompt this time as well. If you've only got a teeny tiny graphics card and you want things to be smaller than FP8, then don't worry because smaller things are available thanks once again to City96. Here we are then on the High Dream Dev GGUF Hugging Face page and as you can see the very smallest one there is just 6.57 gig. Very nice indeed, but it is a Q2. Now the one I'm testing is this one here, the Q4KS, which is just 10.9 gig. It is a little bit more difficult to use the GGUFs as you will have to install a custom node 
in order to load these different models. If you don't have it already, then crack open Comfy UI Manager and install the GGUF Loader Custom Node, like I've got there, Comfy UI GGUF. It will prompt you, but don't forget, each time you install a custom node, you're going to have to restart Comfy UI and also refresh your web browser page. Being smaller, you won't get quite the same image as the FP8 or FP16 versions, but I will show you some of those differences in just a moment. Just to give you a very quick overview, we've got the workflow as a whole here. Over on the left, we've got the model loaders, and you've got your prompt, and finally, a couple of different case samplers and the image. So the top one up here is the FP8, and the bottom one is the GGUF. Taking a look at the prompt for this example, I want a high quality professional photograph of some right dodgy geezer wearing a manky 80s shell suit who's staking it right fast down the snicket away from two fat rosers, hopefully whilst necking a delicious steaming mug of bovril. Here is the first output then. This is the normal one, the FP8, and he's got a steaming cup there. We can't tell whether it's Bovril. The text is a bit messed up in all cases, and he isn't really stegging it. He does seem a bit calm, but uh, we can zoom in a bit there as well. I think that's quite a good result. He's got some decent numbers of fingers going on there. Yeah, all right, not bad. For the GGUF version, you can see there are a few things missing and perhaps the image quality isn't quite as good. It's missing the steam from the bovril, of course, there. And some of the fingers look a little bit interesting, but um, yeah, overall, still not bad. On to more testing. And this time we've got a knackered Boris bike with a chip butty on the seat, standing abandoned against a wall. There should be some colorful graffiti reading Sarni Street and hopefully a cheerful rodent's face in one corner as well. The FP8 has done reasonably well. It's almost got Boris bike there, but yes, of course, all this smaller text, very mangled. The Sarni Street, however, and the rodent, very nice graffiti just not entirely sure what's going on with a number of toes. The GGUF, though fairly similar, has the Sarni Street going across this time, and the rodent is also pretty good. Um, the text is reasonable, Boris Bike, Boris Bike, so well, I don't know. I think the GGUF actually almost did a little bit better there, so there's both pictures once again. Checking out all those different styles. So now I've got a cubist art style painting of a daft Morris dancer chucking a bap at a pigeon in the park. It's very rare to actually have something which does cubism. And um, in this case, I think it's done really well. These are definitely better quality than the NF4 version from last week. This is the result from the GGUF. And I think once again, you'll see... Yeah, so even though it's kind of half the size, it's still very good. Zooming out, which one do you prefer? It, very difficult in this case. Testing some more styles and prompt understanding then with this time a classic Renaissance art style portrait painting of a right minging woman who looks well knackered after trying to fix her wonky brolly using sellotape from her 1960s style kitchen. The FP8 version, I think, has done very well indeed. We've got some interesting fingers. That's fine. That's some rather strange salotate. We've got the brolly and the fridge. Not bad at all. The GGUF takes a different approach as this time the brolly is open and the stick seems to go nicely uh, under her chin. Um, the number of fingers is interesting as indeed is the tape. So I think in this case, the FP8 is certainly one I prefer. We can zoom out and take a quick look at both of them together. Some styles are more difficult than others. So this time I'm asking for a watercolor art style painting of a geezer stealing a Greg's sausage roll out of a glass cabinet. The FP8 I think does surprisingly well. It's got some Greg's text over there. These sausage rolls are absolutely gigantic. I don't think I've ever seen a sausage roll that size in my life before, but still the image quality considering I asked for watercolor is pretty good. Once again, the GGUF has taken a slightly different approach and it's put the text on each of the sausage rolls there, but they are still rather massive and I'm not entirely sure it's quite got as much watercolor style. So far, I've been testing a lot of styles all at the same size, but this time let's 
put it up to something really silly. So I've got a width of 1920 and a height of 1088 for this one. And I want a futurist art style painting of a Martian rodent singing opera on a stage inside a space station cargo bay. For the FP8, even at 1920 by 1088, I think that has done very well indeed. It might not have done all the characters perfectly, but it's pretty close. And also ditto with the GGUF. As you can see, the composition is fairly similar. We've got the crowd at the bottom. It's just some of the smaller details have a few differences there. Once again, you can see them both together. How high can you go? Well, I found about 1760 by 1760 is the maximum before it starts repeating. You can go up a little bit and you've probably seen before in Stable Diffusion 1.5, once the resolution goes too high, things start repeating and much the same thing happens here. So 1760 by 1760, that's the highest I've been able to go. And here we've got our squirrel. You can see you're starting to lose some of the coherence because that's that's not a normal squirrel but he's still chilled out on the sofa and the ggf a little bit better i think because they've got a squirrel face down there but he's got two tails so very high resolution and it has still managed to do quite well just to finish up with for today then i thought i'd also show the high dream full fpa to see if this image quality was any better of course, now you can use the negative prompt, so just click to expand that. And this time I've got a high quality photograph of a fat bird holding a greasy bag of chips in a side alley. This time, of course, we're up to 50 steps and don't forget that all important, slightly higher classifier free guidance. The text this time is actually very good. Look, thanks for watching Street. Thanks for watching Street. And you can read it and it's normal letters, not quite as good street with the ggf so you can see the smaller model is not quite as good as the bigger model but hey if you haven't got the vram it's almost as good Ooh, nerdy rodent he really makes my day showing us ai in a really british way yeah.